Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. When I think of Susan Hayward, I think of great dramatic comedy actresses who are real-life drama queens. Similar to Ava Gardner, women who had a tendency to play parts that were close to home. Why was Susan Hayward the only true person in Hollywood? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Susan Hayward, the stereotype of the fiery redhead. Susan Hayward had a habit of playing women who were going through really tough experiences and were even scorned and somehow make it through those experiences until they're hit so hard at the end, which is what finally brings them down. Hayward was one of Hollywood's most successful film stars from the late 1940s through the early 1960s. Born Edith Mariner on June 30, 1917 in Brooklyn, New York, Hayward began her career as a model while in her late teens. When the search for an actress to play Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind began in 1938, producer David O. Selznick brought Mariner to Hollywood, California to audition for the part. Her lack of acting experience came through in her screen test, however, and she was not given the part. Although she did not win the role, her audition paved the way for other acting opportunities. She was put under contract to Warner Brothers and changed her name to Susan Hayward. Most of her early film assignments were small supporting roles or larger roles in B-movies. In 1942, she made a strong impression as a fiery southern belle in Cecil B. DeMille's Reap the Wild Wind, but it wasn't until the late 1940s that she emerged as a star. Hayward earned her first Academy Award nomination in 1947 for Smash Up! The Story of a Woman, and a second in 1949 for My Foolish Heart. Furthered the stereotype of the fiery redhead by becoming famous for playing strong women who triumphed over adversity in films such as With a Song in My Heart, I'll Cry Tomorrow and I Want to Live, the last of which earned her an Oscar. Throughout the 1950s, Hayward continued to play strong women who often come to tragic ends. She won Oscar nominations for her portrayals of three real-life women. Susan Hayward played alcoholics. Susan was an alcoholic. Susan played women who were depressed and consumed a lot of sleeping pills and other medication just to try to get through life. Susan consumed a lot of sleeping pills and antidepressants. I believe what made Susan such a great actress and again very similar to Ava Gardner is she played women who were a lot like her. Very beautiful, really adorable, quick-witted, very intelligent and very honest. There was no bull or baloney with Susan Hayward. You knew where you stood with her and how she was feeling all the time. And again, we're talking about one of the best actresses ever, so could have easily hid her feelings if she wanted to, and played pretend and fooled a lot of people. But again, what made her such a great actress was that she was so real. And you always knew what she was going through, how she felt, and how she felt about you. If you're interested in Susan Hayward herself and what she went through in life, then I have a few movies that will give you a great idea of why she was a great actress. I Want to Live, where she plays a death row inmate, the true story of Barbara Graham. Barbara was also a woman who went through horrible experiences in life and had some real bad men in her life and ended becoming a criminal herself. Whether she was actually guilty of the murder she was convicted of in the end is a different story. Where Love Has Gone, from 1964, which I believe was based on the life of Lana Turner and how her boyfriend ends up dying in that relationship because her daughter ends up killing him. Susan plays a woman in Where Love Has Gone, who has an abusive boyfriend, or at least a man with a bad temper, and goes off one night, and Susan's daughter comes in and shoots the man. 
I'll Cry Tomorrow, where Susan plays a starlet who drinks too much and is overly medicated, again very similar to the life that Susan lived herself. Let's stop for a minute and think about it. Imagine how much more dramatic real life would be if we had a lot more Susan Haywards in and out of Hollywood. Imagine what life would be like if you always knew where you stood with people. You would really know if someone liked you or disliked you. You would really know if someone loved you or hated you. If you were doing a good job or about to get fired. But at least you would know where you stood in life and how you stood with other people and be able to make the necessary adjustments or continue to do what's working before something bad happened to you or you went off course. That is the life that Susan played in the characters that she played and the life she lived. Which makes her very unique in Hollywood where everything is generally about appearances and make-believe and where Hollywood imitates real life too much and people outside of Hollywood are more interested in appearances instead of reality. Haywood married Jess Barker in 1944 and the couple had twin sons. Haywood and Barker divorced in 1954. Three years later Haywood married Eaton Chalkley, a former Federal Bureau of Investigation agent who had settled in Carrollton, Georgia, where he ran a used car dealership and invested in real estate. He met Haywood at a party while on a business trip to Los Angeles, California. The couple settled on a farm six miles north of Carrollton, where Haywood lived quietly. She and her husband donated 13 acres of land adjacent to their farm to help build a Catholic church, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, one of many local causes in which Haywood became involved. She maintained her residence in Carrollton after the death of Chalkley in 1966. Haywood continued to make films regularly during the 1960s, but none equaled the successes of the 1950s. She received good reviews for her performance in a Las Vegas production of MAME, but left the production because she felt unprepared for the demands the role made on her voice. She blamed herself for not wanting to spend the money on voice lessons that might have allowed her to keep the role. She was replaced by the talented but prickly Oscar-winning actress and singer Celeste Holm. Hayward warned Holm that if she mistreated the great company she was joining, then she, Hayward, would kick you back to Toledo, though Holm was not a Toledo native. In 1972 she was diagnosed with inoperable brain cancer. There was a speculation that the cancer stemmed from her work on The Conqueror, which was filmed in the Utah desert in 1956, very close to a nuclear testing site in full use at the time. Several other members of the crew and cast, including John Wayne and Agnes Moorhead, had already succumbed to cancer. Haywood was treated at Emory University Hospital in Atlanta before moving back to California. She died in Beverly Hills on March 14, 1975, and was buried beside Chalkley in the cemetery of Our Lady of Perpetual Help Catholic Church in Carrollton. Some theorise that Haywood's cancer was a result of having been exposed to nuclear fallout during the filming of The Conqueror near St George, Utah. Fellow cast members John Wayne and Agnes Moorhead also died of cancer. During the 13 weeks of filming in the summer of 1955, the cast and crew were probably dusted with the fallout from the zucchini test and possibly the Tesla test. By this time St George had already received most of the fallout that would later make it the most famous of the downwinder cities. However, the number of cases of cancer detected, 91, and the number of deaths from cancer, 46, in the cast and crew of 220 are in line with the average lifetime risk of cancer in whites, around 40%, and the average lifetime risk of dying of cancer for whites, around 20%. As published by the National Cancer Institute, SEER Cancer Statistics Review, 1975 to 2001. 
If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. Do you think Susan Hayward and the crew's cancer is related to the nuclear fallout near St George, or is it just a coincidence?